Hello. Hello. Hello, Clive. Good to see you. Thanks for leaving a comment there. Sunny day in Derbyshire. Ooh, well, it's not here. It's cloudy. It's cold. It's almost July. It's summer. Two layers instead of five. Hmm. Anyway, good. Good to see you. Everybody else, anybody else that's there, do say hello. Let us know who's there. Um, Clive, we've got a question from you. Um, okay, you're coming to that one shortly. Fantastic. Wonderful. Lottie, hello. Galicia. I bet it's hot in Galicia. So you should have a little smiley face with a knotted handkerchief on it. Maybe it's sunny, sunny weather. Okay, so welcome everybody to this meandering chit chat about all things metaphysical. Do I really need to look at my notes for that opening sentence? I don't know. Probably do, actually, to be honest. Um, so uh, when I wrote the little note for this one, I put it as like stepping through the doorway of the soul with dowsing, which quite frankly is a, is a little bit flowery perhaps, but I really like it as a phrase. And I do think that that's what we try to do here on the channel. Um, and I hope you've been enjoying the uh, interviews that I've been doing with the likes of Jude Curravan and Jeffrey Mishlove. I, th I really enjoy meeting him. So we'll be getting around to some more of those. But at the moment, I've rather run out of my list. So we'll be you'll be getting more videos from me over the coming weeks. Um, not these lives, but we'll do another live in another month's time. But um, more of those good old fashioned videos that I used to do. Um, some years ago and I was looking back at some of the early ones four or five years old and um, most of you regulars will know that I get a little bit nervous before doing these lives it's only natural hello Sally good to see you um, but if you look back at some of those old videos of mine you'll see a person that is basically terrified it's really funny um, it's nice to feel that we are moving forward together in at least a few ways so um, lovely. A few things. We'll get on to the question shortly. We've got eight questions to get through, which is brilliant. So thank you so much for leaving those questions. It's really helpful um, if you do leave the questions beforehand. Um, I know that you know, it's, you're not always going to come up with another question straight away, but uh, that's fine. Um, I, I won't have time as such to sort of do research. I don't expect to be diving into technical aspects of this. It's all about you know, it's all about being based upon my experiences of working with the subtle realms. We can share that. I'm trying to help you all understand that your your connection, your individuality, is an absolutely priceless part of what you are and who you are as a human being. So we all have a story to tell in our lives, and our lives are laid out like a story in so many respects. And if you refer back to my interview with uh, award-winning film director Bill Bennett, you'll see that we touch on the aspect of story structure and the relationship to our lives. In that interview, it really is worth looking into because once you start to come at all of this, I hesitated because I wasn't expecting to be talking about story today, So, but this is where we're going at the moment. Once you start to look at life as a narrative structure, as a structure of story, but one thing that helps you do is to get some detachment from the issues that can seem completely overwhelming. So to, in, in uh, you know, a great exercise actually is to imagine yourself as the hero or the heroine, or, you know, as a non-sex based uh, label, as the star of the story, and what do you want your life to be? And look at the way that you're sitting in your life at this moment. What is it showing you? If it were a story, if it were a movie, what would the character, what position would this character be in? I really didn't expect to be talking about this. But so you would see it from a detached viewpoint. And then you can use that observation, that understanding of seeing yourself in a completely different way and see what is going on in your life, seeing what is being reflected in, what the great film director in the sky is basically putting you through. OK, let's move on from that. Unless you want to talk about that some more and put it into a question, we'll pick that up later on. But we've got these lovely questions to get through. Um, I want to talk about <clears throat> these questions. I've got one from David talking very much about house healing um he lives in a new build um he wants to make sure it's not traumatized so we'll be doing that one clive 
fantastic. Got a question about the oneness. What does that mean? Jude Curavan in particular was talking about that. Uh, we'll cover that off. Um, Lottie, we'll get you through some um, more of this relationship with your guardian spirit. So that's a fantastic question. Kate, I've got a question from Kate. Um, that's a new build. And she's got a specific question again about house healing and water flows. And we'll talk about that. And then we're looking at another question from a different Kate about life purpose. What's that all about? These are big questions. And Sally, uh, question about crop circles. We'll look at dousing in crop circles. Uh, my recollection of doing some of that. And Christina um, asked some questions about, <clears throat> excuse me, about holding the space. Uh, what's that all about? And grid keeping. Uh, so a brilliant question again. And the last question we'll be covering off today uh, is from Bronwyn talking about, okay, permissions, healing, house healing and permissions and that sort of stuff. Stuff. Tammy, good to see you. Good to see you. My sturdy um, friend and moderator, JF, is not with us today. So we're going to be uh, devoid of links. But I wish him well. He's on holiday with his family. So that's lovely. But we'll be thinking of him. Okay, let's dive in. Let's dive in. Um, just before we do, this isn't I make notes. Just before we do, um, I have started a healing course. And we've got some lovely students on there. I have had one drop out. So I do have a space available. If anybody wants to pick up from session two on the house healing course, if anybody's interested in learning more about the house healing and understanding where they fit into their reality, where you fit in as an individual person to your own reality, because this is a big part of the house healing work. It really is about pulling apart <laughs> the context of every exchange that we have with a client. If you're interested in doing that, um, then drop me a line, uh, tim.walter at nightthrows.com. I think I can say that, uh, or use the contact form on my website, okay? And we'll pick that up from next month. So that's fine. I usually get latecomers uh, on each of these courses so far, so that's cool. Just wanted to say that. It'd be lovely if somebody wants to join in. Um, and fill the gap. So now we come to David's question. Brilliant. David, who can't be with us today, um, is talking about, uh, he moved to a new build recently, and he wants to know if there's anything he can do to make sure that the space of the house is not traumatized. Now that was what he actually wrote on the end of last month's um, live. Uh, so I made a note of that, but he also emailed me as well. So this is really quite important for him. And you can see why. I'm going to read this question. He says, we moved from uh, okay Bath to Keensham uh, about six months ago. So they moved to a, a new uh, village. Uh, they moved out of necessity as his partner is disabled and they needed to find a home that was modified for a wheelchair user. So David loved Bath and it had been his home for 25 years. It's the only place he's lived that felt like he was home and he'd been fine. He is finding it difficult to adjust to living in the new home, which is a new build on an estate that is still being built. OK, so we've got the picture. Very different set of circumstances. And we all know what it's like when you find a house that you walk in and it's just like, yeah, I've been here before, that sort of feeling almost but uh, really feels like home. So he says, we have some lovely meadows and woods in walking distance, but they will be building another housing development on the meadows, which breaks his heart, understandably, and leaves him feeling uneasy and unsettled. Is there anything I can do, he says, to make our home feel better? As I can't help thinking that the land is traumatized with everything that is going on, etc. Or am I being oversensitive and ungrateful? Well, okay, so first of all, um, David, it's you're not being oversensitive or ungrateful. You might be being a little bit ungrateful. I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with accepting our humanness in these circumstances. If we don't accept the emotions that we're processing, we don't actually move on through them and we don't behave as human beings. That's one thing I would say. I am a great believer in the fact that what this is all about, this this reality is all about is the is finding the balance between the human nature and 
us developing and understanding our whole selves, which means embracing the spiritual aspect. Now then, <clears throat> so are you being uh, oversensitive? No, not being oversensitive. Are you being ungrateful? Well, possibly, but what the hell? It doesn't matter, does it? Right. Now, the question is, the important thing is, what does he want to do about it? How does he want to move on from those feelings of uh, being oversensitive and ungrateful? Please do accept that I'm I'm slightly joking when I I'm being facetious like that about uh, David's uh, you know em emotional response. It's a joke. I care deeply actually about the way that David feels, and that's why we do this work because we want things to change. We want everybody to actually find the joy that is out there and available to us all. But we do such a good job as human beings of quashing the joy and wringing it out of almost all circumstances. Sometimes there are some people that don't. And of course, that's what we're all aiming towards doing is, is, is doing exactly the opposite. It's to actually live in the joy in that in all circumstances. So coming back to David's question and David's point of view. OK, so the one thing is. When we, when we move house, these are very practical things. When we move house, we, we always, if we li lived somewhere that we've loved, then we always miss it. And that's a human response. That's fine. So what's he going to do? There's a certain amount of healing that David can do with the actual land. A coming to terms with the new position, the new space, the new outlook. It actually reflects a change in him, a change in him and his partner. Because the energy of those two creative beings changes and therefore the external environment changes. So really it's a very practical and gentle acceptance of shifting. Other things will have changed in David's life. Other things will have changed in his partner's life. But as a spiritual act, as an act of embracing the new position, the new land, the new environment, it's simply a question of expressing the desire to help the spirit of land. Enable the spirit of the land to understand what is going on above it. Now, when we say understand what is going on above it, we don't mean that the spirit of land has a brain and is processing in the same way as we do. But the spirit of land, when we talk to the spirit of place, has an awareness of what is going on on the surface. It is, you know, we are connected to it. It's part of us. It's we are part of it. There is an awareness and an exchange. And so what we're asking David to do is to say, in a private little ceremony outside, in this garden perhaps, where anywhere where he's not too overlooked and he won't feel self-conscious, to simply a, say to the spirit of land, light a candle or light a little bonfire or something like that, but use that and go within, go into that meditative space and simply say to the spirit of land to ask. I mean, you can do it with dousing. You can douse to ask to speak to the spirit of land. Spirit of place, the spirit of place. I'm talking about the land itself, not the guardian aspect that is present and will very readily come forward. But in this instance for David, it's about him thinking that the land is traumatized. So the land has a spirit and will speak. And so therefore that's what we want him to address is the land, speak to the land. And so therefore he can do that by dousing, go into that inner space. With a dousing rod, David, you can do this. You know you can do this. You've had conversations and you've put them on the, the live chat in the past. You can hold the one rod, or it doesn't matter, two rods, and ask to speak to the spirit of land and express the way that you feel to that spirit of that place and express your 
concern that the land is traumatized. Ask those questions. Are you traumatized? Is there anything I can do to help? Respond to those answers that you get, David, when you douse and ask and have the conversation, just as you would to a person. You will get yes, no, yes, no responses. And you may also get, I think you've done this before, you will also get, you'll hear or get a feeling of that exchange as it occurs. And simply by doing that, by, by opening your heart and opening your spirit and opening yourself to the land and expressing that and having that conversation, you will have a development of a greater connection to it what you would also want to do i would suggest is to do really do some work on that garden if you've got time really make that garden space your space for you and your partner uh, and as the new buildings are built then you may ask part of your conversation with the spirit of the land is Ask whether those buildings need, would benefit being blessed. Now, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm pausing because I'm thinking, well, actually, that's, that's a question really not so much for the, the land, more for the guardian of the space. So we always talk about the spirit of place, which being the spirit of land, the spirit, the guardian energy of the space. And then if you've got a building and then you've got a spirit of the actual building. So what I'm saying is the middle one, the personality that will be very willing to speak to you. Ask, simply ask whether whether there's a little blessing that you would do. It's a private blessing. It's not really about, it's not about you kind of saying, oh yes, this is, you know, this is um, a wonderful building and it's, it's blessed and it's the right thing to do. It's not about that at all. What it's about is simply asking upstairs to recognize in all its ability to change physical form, that this new building has been created and there are families that are going to move into the area and and the land and those families want to be living in harmony and as you as a creative force can express your desire that they live in harmony in a in a you know positive and and rather bounteous uh, wonderful way that's what a blessing is uh, you know in that sense OK, so um, those are very broad, um, broad things. What you can do, of course, if you feel really uncomfortable where you are, um, then you can uh, pick up Adrian's book, uh, Heal Your Home. Uh, there's two versions, two, two editions, sorry, one follows the other, one supports the other. Read the first one, see how you feel about it if you haven't got it already and uh, follow some of the instructions in there. Um, uh, of course, you can in future join the house healing course and <laughs> know in detail about the process and the way of being um, in order to feel that you are helping that space. But I suspect, David, knowing you and knowing you're a regular here, um, that perhaps that one is slightly beyond your step at the moment. Um, and I know you're a busy man. So, uh, but yeah. I suspect that although you expressed your unease, uh, I suspect that really you knew the answer to that already. Um, but that's fine. That's all good. Okay. Oh, Tammy, yeah, it'd be lovely. Yeah, drop me a, if you want to talk, then drop me a line. Uh, we can talk about it and, and then you can make up your mind. You know, you don't have to make a decision. Just to, um, quite um, as, as you're a regular here. Um, well, yes, I mean, the energy lines, um, sorry, let me just finish talking to Tammy one second, sorry. What I was saying, Tammy, was quite happy to talk to you because you're a regular and I get it that it's quite a, a decision to make. It's, it's, you know, it's a substantial investment. So if you want to drop a line, let's sort out a time to talk. It's fine. Okay, moving on. Clive, that's really good advice, Tim. Thank you. Yes, what uh, What about energy lines? So, yeah, I mean, so that's really what I was referring to when I was saying pick up a copy of Adrian's book, have a look at that. The classic thing that we would immediately jump on, um, you know, as, as, as 
somebody in your position, Clive, or somebody in, in um, David's position, I'm making big assumptions here because I don't know you as such, then we immediately think of energy lines, that's one thing, earth energy lines, um, spirits and ghosts and trapped souls that still could be present from the land, that's another thing, these are things that we talk and think about uh, very, very quickly as a layman. Uh, water lines, underground water lines, they could be reharmonized and worked with. So, yeah, um, David could could well dive into the dowsing. I suspect that he probably already has done a little bit of examination of earth energy lines in the area. Um, the earth energy lines are always a good place to start because they are so important to us as, as human beings and in reflection of how we feel about a place. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, basically, you know, I, we, we could spend, well, in fact, we do, we spend uh, 10 months on the course talking about what you what you could do for a house to help it change and be more balanced. So I can't really go into too much more detail than that at the moment, but hopefully that's helped David when he watches this on playback um, to feel a bit better. And of course, David, if you need to drop me a line on email, I will answer you when I have time, of course. Let's go on to yours. This is a, this is, if I, you know, if that first question from David was a big one, okay, let's dive into this one, Clive. Um, okay, I'm glad you enjoyed the interview with Jude. Uh, so what he, what he says is, I wonder when people start to talk about oneness, what they mean by this. On this plane of experience, we function in duality. Yeah, maybe when we leave, there is a sense of unity, but how far does this go? Do we then lose individuality in the great beyond at some point? Okay, so this, this is massive, isn't it? Really good question. Okay, let's take let's break it down a little bit. On this plane of experience, we function in duality. Yeah, okay, so, so duality, when we talk about things, when we talk about the experience of reality at the quantum level we're talking about non-local experience non-local physics i think you're fairly um physics and science you based clive and you're thinking so you know this i'm just saying really for background uh for others um so when we talk at the quantum level um, and smaller we're talking about non-local uh interactions uh up here in the macro level human scale things are uh, things abide by the laws Newtonian laws of physics and that means we get dualities of things uh, the classic is hot cold you know hot means that we can identify how cold things are everything good bad good evil fear love all of these contrasts or dualities are pairs of things and some people uh, kind of pull that apart further and they say, well, it's not really pairs of things. It's not like being on a line. It's like being on a dial. And actually, it just depends where you are on that dial. So love, fear, you might have love, you might have fear. But where are you at a particular time on that dial? But it's still a dual based existence in this uh, realm, in this reality. And of course, it's governed by its separateness. It's governed by the boundary nature of our experience physical form has edges we know where the edge is when we talk about oneness what we're saying partly of course is that the quantum field quantum field quantum realm quantum field quantum realm oh, let's go with quantum realm permeates absolutely all physical form and all the spaces in between. So it's the constant field from which material, you know, the atomic structure is built and then the atoms build things and blah, 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 here we are. So in that sense, everything is connected and within the quantum aspect, we get, we get this, um, we get entanglement, which is literally the linkage of, um, of, uh, I think the molecules would be the correct term, or atoms. So I mean, certainly the, a linkage of structures, so that when one aspect changes over here, it's linked to other aspects that, that change anyway. Uh, change as well. 
And this, the point being, at the quantum level, the, this is instant. Instant communication is not governed by the speed of light. So at the quantum realm, everything is linked. And what Clive is asking, I know he probably understands all of that stuff. Hello, Nancy. Um, what Clive is asking is, so, okay, so when we leave this realm of duality, th there is, he says, maybe when we leave, there is a sense of unity. But how far does this go? Well, for sure, uh, near-death experiences tell us that there is absolutely a sense of unity. The big overriding feeling at that time of part departure is the the feeling of going home the feeling of being unified with other souls of oneness as a concept doesn't help us looking at it from a dual perspective a duality perspective and so therefore uh, what you're actually now asking is as we move through your question clive is maybe when we leave there is a sense of unity yes but how far does this go do we then lose individuality well this, of course, is actually, <laughs> it, it's a brilliant, que a brilliant question because I don't know. I don't know the answer to this one. Fundament I think I might be saying this quite a lot today in some of these questions, which is a bit annoying. I find it a bit annoying. But the, there's a, there's, is actually still, from our perspective in this realm, there is actually still a duality that goes on when we try to communicate with the spirit of the one of our loved ones that's passed because we can still identify their living entity their living soul right because we can recognize them we understand that we are talking to them if i want to speak to my father i understand that i feel him i know that he's there in fact i know that he's here <laughs> so um so his character remains but at the same time we know we believe, I believe, and others believe too, that the soul will continue its journey and develop and form again and, and make a choice as to whether it wants to come back into this realm or not. And therefore, what am I talking to when I'm talking to the spirit of my father? Am I talking to the spirit? Am I talking to a recording type thing? Or is that still linked to the, the real uh, form as he starts a new life, but I'm connecting into his his past life, you know, the, the life that he had that I recognized as part of him. The the oneness, I think I think I'm beginning to grasp, um, <laughs> I think I'm beginning to grasp actually how deep that is. Um, well, hang on, I'll come to your question in a second, Tammy. Uh, if, if you're addressing me. Um, the oneness really is, really, the bottom line of this is that the way that I look at that and the way that I see it, I mean, I haven't had any words from upstairs on this one, but the way that I see it, actually, now it's only taking form as we're talking now, is that the, 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 that's the point, is that the oneness is never not present. So there is a oneness in the form of, of us here on this realm, in this physical dimension, despite duality, because the duality actually is part of the illusion, okay? Because we, we, we are, our roots are in the quantum form, okay? And then once we go through to um, the spirit world, once we cease to be present in this world, we are still going in and connected. It's a matter of perception. So really, I think this is where, where the, the, the real highlight of the illusion of duality that is created by duality comes to the fore. So I think really, um, I'm not sure whether that kind of helped you. Did that help? Clive, did that take you on um, at all in that step? 
And yes, so in this case, I'm, I'm going to now link it in with what Tammy's saying. It, it would be their higher self we're, we're communicating with, correct? And yeah, that's probably, well, mm, the higher self. Well, <laughs> if we want to pull that apart, right? Because a lot of dowsers uh, believe that they're communicating with your own, you know, a lot of dowsers think that they are communicating with their own higher selves when they're dowsing to get the information. And I was writing about this the other day um, because you've got the higher self, which still sort of has an aspect of ego, which is, so in that sense, Tammy, yeah, you would recognize the character of the person in the higher self. That's part of that connection that remains with us as we are here and forms part of that unity that we were talking about just now, the higher self. It's not the ego self, the ego self being the human being that struggles day to day with all of that stuff about all of this stuff that's so important to us and gets us so wound up and gets us in all these pickles from which we learn, from which our higher self learns. But there's also the soul self. There's also the soul self. The soul self is not necessarily considered to be the higher self. So they are like threads coming down to form the, the one human being that we are aware of. So I, I'm not, I mean, yeah, maybe. Maybe that's the higher self, Tammy. But then doesn't that mean the higher selves kind of just litter heaven? Because, <laughs> I mean, in the nicest possible way. But... You know, if if my father has a higher self that represents him as Ted Walter, and then he goes off and becomes somebody else, it becomes, I don't know, Jack Kerouac or something. And then that there's a higher self, another higher self there. At some point, they join together to be forming the soul of the being that was both of those people. And maybe they're right. Maybe that's where we go with. Mark, hello. Um... Yeah, I don't know, don't know. So, but that's quite good. I mean, I think that actually that encapsulates the oneness quite well, actually, the, that last five minute chit chat. Um, I don't know, Clive, maybe you're thinking about it. Maybe that doesn't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move. Oh, okay. Uh, God's, right. Yes, so are you saying that God's spirit is experiencing itself and growing? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 100%. percent Now about that being the purpose of um, purpose of life, the meaning of life. I, I really do think that, that, that we are simply, uh, in, in all its amazingness, actually simply experiencing for source, whatever source God is, we are experiencing for that, to experience itself, to know itself. We are manifest in this dimension, in this resonance, to experience and feedback information about what am I. Now, Jude Caravan talked a lot about fractals, about the structure of the cosmos in, in all its different dimensions being based on fractals. So fractals being, I mean, I'm going into real simplicity now. So fractals being fundamentally numerical patterns, patterns created by numbers, the numbers of God, the numbers of creation. And the fractals are usually actually created with very simple number sequences. And this ties up with Sally's question in, uh, later on. Uh, about crop circles, because what we can say is that reality, the cosmos, is formed arithmetic. No, <laughs> it's not formed from simple arithmetic, because that is something that's taught in schools at a very basic level. What it's formed by is mathematics hugely complex mathematics but 
at their foundation, they are fundamentally very simple strings of numbers. Now, don't, don't get me talking about numbers because I don't really understand the numbers, but what's important is the concept that reality is formed from maths, from numbers, right? Now, as you said in various scriptures and Bible and, you know, the religious texts, and what that means is that it's all about repeating patterns. That was the important thing that what Jude was saying there was it's all everything at whatever scale you're looking at. It doesn't matter whether it's the tiniest of the tiny or the hugest of the huge, you know, right across the spectrum. It's about simple numbers and repeating patterns and ever repeating patterns. You think of the classic, uh, if you Google the Mon, 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 Mon set. Montreal. Oh, I don't try Googling any of that. But, you know, you get hugely complex patterns created from very simple repeating patterns. Now, what this means is, or what has been found, is that there are repeating patterns within, within society, within civilizations, within people. It's all repeating patterns. It's all, uh, they're all, you know, algorithmic on scales. And quite frankly, in, in, in a completely non-scientific way, this is why it's very easy to see why somebody like um, Elon Musk would say, well, you're living, we're living in, a, in a, um, a simulation because it would be very, it would be comparatively simple to create the mechanisms for a simulation of existence of reality um, and then let it go. You know, there it goes. And in a way, that's probably, you know, it doesn't actually matter whether we're living in a simulation or not to me, because there's still the stru same structures. And it's all about, as Clive says, yes, a computer program then. Exactly. Dixie, hey, it's all about, as Clive says, it's God's spirit is experiencing itself and learning, growing, finding information. Sorry, I've, I've got to read this. I've got to read the chat. Um, uh uh, so, okay, okay, so um, this, is, this is why as a human we have to really use every emotion to its fullest whilst we're here to complete and contribute to source as a human. Yeah, well, that's an interesting way of phrasing it, Digsy. Um, do, do we really have to use every emotion to its fullest or is it actually um, a really, really lovely way of accepting that when we're going through the absolute S-H-I-T-E, that it's okay, you know, it, it's all right, because they'll, you'll come out the other side and you have expressed, going through the dark times, you have expressed a way of being and you have a shared an experience, you have, you have experienced, you have simply been present but what we do of course is we get wound up in it all and we fight it so much yeah cool um okay so so there's the wonders there that took us on to that which was fantastic um now i wrote a note clive when when you sent me that question i wrote one point that i wanted to raise was we all ride this wave of unity. We're also fighting the degrees of separation, i.e. there will be those who object to the way in which others are expressing the desire for unity even, right? So what I'm saying is, again, about this individual expression of self. It's important. This is why it's so important. You know, spirituality is not about fluffy, fluffy, lovely, lovely. You know, there are some aspects of pulling apart your own life and understanding who you are, because that's a big part of it, that are really difficult and challenging. You know, anybody that does the work knows that. But again, that's part of the expression of the universe, finding itself, discovering itself. But we might even object to the way that somebody else is doing it, doing exactly the same work on exactly the same spiritual path. But it's just like, oh, I don't like the way they're doing it. It's like that, and that creates the separation. So how difficult is it? And this is part of our problem right now. You know, as a species, we are 
being pulled together by communications, which is a part of developmental growth. It's all part of the numbers and the algorithms of progress and change. But what we're in at the moment is, is that process of understanding and allowing that and recognizing that it's so important that we actually do what we talk about, which is to say, I respect you, I love you, I love you for what you're doing, despite the fact that I don't do it that way. Oh, you know, I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, oh, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, the thing called life, mate. Yeah, absolutely spot on. Um, oh, yeah, uh, what I've put here is, uh, yeah, yeah, so this idea of separation is, is, again, in relation to the oneness or the not oneness is, you know, those thoughts of I'm better than you. I'm doing I'm doing it properly. I, I am the one that does it right. I am the perfect one. Well, of course, that's nonsense. We you know, that's not a way to express unity and to find the heart center. Um, and what I've written here as a final note to myself to raise this at this point during our chat was that I would point you to Paul Selig's work um, as an expression of being and accepting that is a man uh, who quite frankly i still um i mean i am in awe uh, of the enormity of the message from his guides which we get you know which we which we are accessed to and we have access to but just what a great channel he is and he's in such a grounded person bloody fantastic right um yes now uh, just before we move on to the next one um which will be lottie question from lottie um yeah do yeah, do do if you if you haven't dived into paul selig's work clive i think you'll enjoy it actually i think let us know how you get on with paul um there if you go if you do a search on the, his videos in my channel you will find that in the space beneath the videos where i'm having a chat with him obviously is linked to his channel so do have a look at his his sessions um i know they've been very very helpful for, for some people that have uh, moved over there from from this subscriber base which is brilliant so um sorry i actually want to keep i want to keep up with the chat um uh yeah so yeah, this is the thing, Tammy, isn't it? You know, that, um, yes, absolutely, Dixie. Oh, but indeed, but, you know, let's just let's just take those two comments there from Tammy and Dixie for a second, okay? Because every word he puts out there is energy and it can come back to you just as you said it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that absolutely, it's a reflection. And what we encounter is a mirror. So what we, you know, when I was growing up, I, I mean, it's, it's easier for me to relate it to my own individual life, so you get it. When I was growing up, I, I, I hated, I, I hated, mm. um, I just hated everything. And uh, so that's what I saw, was I saw a huge, you know, a huge amount of violence and hatred and fear and, ah, oh, jeepers. Um, so as you do the work and you become more compassionate and understand uh, not understanding because that's a that's a mental process you you especially for men it's 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 hard sometimes to actually connect to the heart um just because we're not very we're not built like i don't know why we're not but we're not built like that um so the more we can then connect to our hearts and function from the heart then that is what we get reflected back okay so then and we know this because this is what we talked about before about all the time about the fact that you know if we want to change the world then we change from within we change our heart sorry about the creaky chair i still haven't changed it um so it's really, really important that we uh, understand the power of connecting to the heart and the way that we live from 
love. So, so as we connect to the heart and we express ourselves with love, doesn't mean to say that we are completely eradicating fear. It's kind of like, well, there's fear, but we know why fear is there. It's to keep us safe, but let's do it anyway. I mean, I'm assuming it's safe to do so. Uh, if you can then connect to the heart and do the thing, then you the, what comes back is different because I'll say this one more time because reality being built from the quantum level the molecules the atomic structure physical form is constantly being renewed and this is why somebody you know somebody like rupert sheldrake would talk about the templates of form so they're an informational field that the physical form then fills into because the physical form actually is being changed all the time because we know that from the quantum realm because the quantum realm is full of infinite possibility which means that the atom that the the, the energy the quanta of energy that come into existence and nobody knows from where they come they create the material world every moment it is being recreated so you know like when you wake up in the morning and you had a crappy day the day before and you wake up and think ah oh, today's a new day it's a fresh day i can start again i can do these things right and yesterday i made a mess of it today it's all good well actually we have that opportunity every moment it's just that we don't recognize it because form literally is being created around us from within and from the, the overseeing forces of the, the divine and creating form. So we have a chance to change at every single moment. But as we would expect, the intricacy and the depth of detail and the, the amazing complexity and the amazing experience of being alive part of the energy of maintaining it as physical form is keeping everything in stasis, in keep it as it is, don't change anything, <laughs> right? So when we've got habits or addictions that we want to overcome, these are the forces that we're actually fundamentally fighting against, is we're fighting against the state, the, 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 the forces of stasis that keep reality as reality, that we know it. And that's what we're going through. That's what we're changing. That's what we are changing as a species, is we're changing the stasis of everything. We're changing the laws of physics in a way, because we're actually, as more and more of the 7.7 billion of us accept that, oh, I'm, I perhaps have some influence over my reality, then actually that wave of change occurs. Right? Fantastic, isn't it? Okay. Nick, hello, mate. Good man. Sean, hello. Uh, Tammy, I too hated literally every second of every minute and so on with my young life. Yeah, you and me both. Good job we didn't meet at the time, Tammy. Um, I know that the node points of Earth energy is the place where long waves can be implosive, so can collapse the long wave to get the zero point to change our consciousness. Right, okay, so this is um, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. Yes, indeed. Fantastic. Excellent. So, so again, Mark is alluding to, I'm guessing, some of Dan, Dan Winter's uh, work, and I say it every month, I must get in touch with him. Um, so, so Dan Winter is talking about the very specific physics of uh, vortices um, and vortices, earth energy spirals as part of this whole kind of vortex, vortex physics is fundamental to the creation of reality, as Mark is saying. But and so, but we can look at it the other way round, though, Mark, you see, and you probably understood this anyway, but I'll say this for the benefit of others. Um, that the way that Mark's talking about it there is that the nodal point of Earth energy is the place where long where waves can be implosive and so collapse to get the zero point uh, energy, which is the quantum field, to change our consciousness. Okay, so but we can look at it the other way. 
in that we can look at it from our perspective and say that actually it is collapsing because we wish it to collapse. We wish it to change. It is our intention. As Digsy and Tammy were saying earlier on, and we were talking about earlier on, that energy of the individual is so important. And that, of course, is what we do in the house healing work. It's exactly what we do, is to express the desire for change to those that are in control, absolutely, of the outcomes, which is the management, not us. We can play our part in that change of form. As does the client, of course, you cannot ever, you know, this is not about the house healer being special and being able to communicate with the management. It's about the, the desire of the client for change and improvement in their reality as well. You know, it's a big part of it, big part of it. This is why the word healer is, is a, actually is a nonsense. It should be kind of like, just take that off there. But what else do we call ourselves? We have to say we're with something and we're working with space and we're working with the subtle energies. So we have to be a house healer. But we, as with all healing modalities, if you go down, if you were um, not involved in any of the spiritual stuff and you went to hospital and you, you, and you had to get your broken leg fixed, the vast majority of the healing of that broken leg is down to the individual person. That whose leg is broken, nothing else. Um, same with a lot of psychiatric issues, uh, you know, bless them. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so let's not go down that particular rabbit hole right now. Um, but fundamentally, the intent, the absolute intent, um, don't think, absolutely, don't think about um, the, uh, what I would say is, uh, and Mark is probably completely across this from previous comments, but for others watching this, don't think about the vortices as being like separate to you. They are part of you. So, uh, so don't keep, yeah. The danger is that we give away our power to something that we feel is not uh, an aspect of us in terms of comprehending in terms of, of of feeling disconnected right so let's not do that it, it's always difficult in this work to maintain the human perspective and talk about things logically but to acknowledge that actually we're spiritual beings and we have to take that spiritual perspective <laughs> as well so always chopping and changing okay um Okie dokie 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 dokie. Uh, is that Danger Mouse on your avatar? I can't tell, Maz. It's probably something completely different. Lottie. Right, let me just have a quick slurp. Uh, sorry, the old T, and then we'll come on to Lottie's question. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Lottie. Lottie says, I'm just curious about how I might connect with the guardian spirit here and whether difference in language is an issue. I know that we are the first foreigners to live here. No, I mean, uh, uh, there's more to Lottie's question. We'll come on to that in a sec. The language, don't worry about that. You know, uh, we can't speak tree, but we can communicate with trees. So different human languages is absolutely not a problem. And the reason is because we're not working from that you know, that, that surface um, level of interaction. We're working from uh, a deeper level of interaction. Well, language, after all, is only symbols, audible symbols, to represent a meaning. So when we're communicating with, uh, with subtle energy beings and, and things like trees, uh, flowers, houses, you know, whatever it be, we're working on the meaning level not on the, the clashing of symbols to make a noise to communicate, if that makes sense. Hello. Um, I don't, it, uh, traditionally, I think it's supposed to be, isn't it Willow, I think, um, one-eyed oracle. But um, it, quite frankly, it doesn't, doesn't make any difference. 
really doesn't you can douse with metal with douse with wood douse with plastic yeah it really is not about the um not about the actual material as such um the only thing that you need to be careful of is when you're using crystals because your crystals are far more responsive and 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 active lottie you haven't finished with you yet let's go through this um she says i was thinking how can i start to build a relationship with the guardian spirit of the space and gain more confidence uh, flexing her mediumistic muscle oh no okay yeah well you don't need that um okay so that was the question sorry lottie i thought we had more to say on that um yes okay so the key the key thing i will just add something to this lottie it becomes almost um almost predictable that i would say this because um this is the way that that my life changed so fundamentally but it was through making contact with that guardian spirit with the guardian spirit of the, of the house that we moved into in fact she made contact with us right now i can't remember um i think your guardian spirit i think you've your uh, you, remind me lottie oh hazel thank you clive in relation to the dowsing terrific All right um Lottie, coming back to yours. Um, did the Guardian approach you or did you, you've you asked to speak to the Guardian? I can't remember. Sorry, it was a little while ago when you first made contact. It's important to me because he, the Guardians, you know, we've all got Guardians in, in the house. There is a Guardian of the space. It's not in your own Guardian Angel. It's the Guardian. Oh, you haven't made contact yet. Oh, you're trying... <laughs> Come on, girl. Um, okay, so uh, everybody's every house has got a guardian. Every space, ill-defined term, but every space has got a guardian aspect, and they are um, very likely, very very likely, to want to speak to you if you want to speak to them. Now, what 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 will tend to happen? Okay, what will tend to happen is that. Um, you will get excited about it and you'll speak to the guardian energy of the space and you'll start to have a conversation and you'll ask all sorts of questions that it mean that you have to kind of reframe your idea of what it means to be a human being. And um, these are not necessarily deep questions, they're just sort of normal questions you would ask and you're going to ask me what are the questions to ask. Well, that's up to you. But, you know, I, I when I when i started dousing and talking to the guardian spirit uh the lady that we would call we call jane uh, i wanted to know all about you know what were my past lives and had i lived here before not here but in the other house and what did i do and what did she do had she, had she been alive uh she had and um all of these sort of questions and and uh, had we met before in different lives and all of this sort of stuff? And we, I know we've covered some of this before in the past. And and then um, and then what happens is that you actually run out of questions and you start to ask things about you know the meaning of life. Um, and actually, the, it's very difficult to have a conversation about the meaning of life because you're talking about abstract concepts with a being that um, actually doesn't even see life in the same way as we do because they're in a completely different vibration. So um it all kind of tends to grind to a halt but the important thing is that um they are going to be open to you asking questions because they know what you're doing you're opening up your spiritual self you're opening up to part of you that quite frankly you agreed to explore before you even came down here so they are a very beneficent, benevolent, benevolent, the very benevolent energy, and they will help. But you may find that you run out of conversational topics. And that's not that's not a problem because you can just chit chat to them about day to day stuff and you can ask them about things that you want to do to the house and you can ask them about, 
you know, uh, energy, the energy flow in the house and how you might help them or how they might, you know, be, or what you might want need to do in your physical realm in order to work with them to improve the overall ambience or the overall health, the overall health giving properties of the house. The overall health giving properties of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, properties house. Um, but what I was going to say was, even just in wanting to ask the question of the guardian energy of the space, you are stepping into, you're stepping through a very significant doorway you are opening a portal in that sense to be communicating with the other part of self which is expressed as the guardian energy of the space now what i mean by when i say opening the portal to the other's expression of self i don't mean that you're making it up because that would be saying like well this is a human being and the human being is the ultimate important thing and anything that they do they're just making it up it's imaginary no that's not what i mean at all what i actually mean is it's a really important step because it means that you're willing to accept spirit beings into your reality and to accept and to step into it's not a big deal in the sense of it's not difficult it's a lovely 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 thing to do that's why it's a, a good thing. It's a really, it's a big deal from the point of view that it's a lovely thing to do because you're opening your arms to an aspect of life, reality, being human that you hadn't opened to yourself to before. But it doesn't mean to say that you necessarily, Lottie or anybody else watching this, have to ask the big, deep, difficult questions. We used to talk to Jane about what we were having for dinner, what we were having for tea, you know, and... Uh, uh, all of this stuff. What did she used to do as a little girl? She used to live in the village that we used to live in. And she used to come down to the, our house as a little girl and with her mum, with her mother, who was in service in this big old house. So we would chit chat. Um, but they, you know, just enjoy it and love it. And the same applies when you go to a sacred site. When you go to a standing stone circle, as I know a lot of you are really you know, fond of those, as I am. Um, I miss them. I haven't got one nearby here. Um, but when you go into those spaces, you can speak to the guardian energy there too, in exactly the same way. Be respectful. Be considerate. Be polite. But also be loving and be open and accept that there's also a levity. Most sacred site guardians are full of laughter and love. And then usually not too laden down with the burdens of um, what humanity has been doing in the space. Sometimes they are, but usually they're not. And that's what's so lovely about it. Um, it is lovely, yeah. Um, it is lovely. Okay, so I think I kind of went around in circles a little bit there, but and Lottie, brilliant. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, yeah, uh, um, keep trying, yeah. To get, um, just the, the 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 term trying, you know, that makes it feel difficult the um stop trying so hard stop trying so hard when i first started doing healing we we had a very old cat in the old house and we were doing some healing for the cat and i was sitting in the chair and I'm, jane was there yes you will be definitely overthinking it um and that's exactly what i was doing and i was sitting there with the cat uh trying to trying at that point trying to send healing to the cat and jane said stop trying it was just like no 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 just just you don't, you don't have to try this is not this is not a task this is not hercules carrying out a you know the 
12 tasks of Hercules or whatever it was. It's not difficult. It's upstairs saying, stop trying, relax, just have fun with it. Really, come on, come on. Okay, let's move on to Kate. Um, so this is okay. So this is quite a this is quite a serious one actually. So Kate says, uh, my house is new. It's a new build over an old mine. Unbeknown to me, I've been suffering with geopathic stress for some time, but luckily found out about it and had my house worked on and work on it myself. However, I have a man-made water channel under my home that, when it rains, becomes noxious almost instantly. So that means, so in other words, it's, it is generating a field of detrimental energy because of the throughput. Um, if it's a man-made water channel, it's probably a, a con, conduit. Con, I can't remember what they call them. Um, what can I so living cold? Well, it rains a lot. Other than clearing every day, what can I do? It really affects me. One of my horses also has one that runs through her stable, which affects her badly if it rains while she's in there. She's on a farm about a mile away. So, okay, well, this is this is partly to do with the perception of um, Kate's reality. So the 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 informing fields of information in Kate's reality are that this is the this is what's happening. It's unfortunate that she is subject to it. But this is also part of, um, and, and this is not to lay blame at Kate's doorstep it, at all, at all, at all, at all. We've been talking about what it means to be human. And this is simply a reflection for Kate of a vulnerability that she has, which is expressing itself in the fact that in the material world, this is what is occurring for her. And of course, there is deep sympathy because this is coming from upstairs deep sympathy from upstairs for that circumstance and for all those that actually find themselves in those sort of situations. So one of the things is you don't need to keep clearing it yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't often recommend that you uh, that people put uh, a, a physical object in place. Excuse the dog barking. He's just doing what he does best. Um, in this instance, though, Kate, big crystal, big crystal, big, 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 big crystal. You want to get out, it's not, uh, I don't know, you might be able to, you'll, you'll find one. A big amethyst crystal, what's that? That's about six, eight inches. Amethyst, let me just double check. A nice big amethyst crystal put at the boundary inside your home, inside your home. Where the where you know the pipe is underneath, but put it right by the wall, upstream. And what you do before you put it there is that you um, ask upstairs. You ask Archangel. You're going to ask Archangel Raphael in this in this instance to actually create around from that crystal a loving, protective energy field that will extend all the way down all the way along that man-made tube underneath your house so that when it rains and when that that those spirals try to get created the detrimental ones the ones that are, you are affected by they actually are negated by that loving wonderful crystal because the energy of the water flowing will take the loving energy of the crystal and spread it through that space see how you get on with that okay do it with love. Do it. Do it. Um, you, you might need to change it to start with. Uh, that's, that's, this is, this is um, going quite a lot, but you might need to change it to start with about once a week. You know, it's a lot better than doing it once a day if it's raining. But once a week, maybe. Okay. But it's. But you once you've charged it, in order to clear you know, clean it, you simply you know put your hand on it and, and meditate and ask your your Okay, so you can ask, you can actually ask your guardian of the house, the guardian of the space to clear it, it can be cleared, or you can ask Archangel Raphael to clear it, and it will be cleared, and reset, it's like resetting it, right, to be another filter, it's like the, like the water jug filters, that's really what you're doing, but in an energetic sense, see how you get on, that should work, you could do the same for your horse, uh, you probably don't need you probably don't need much more than a standard sort of uh, rose quartz crystal. It's not massive. Um, 
you can put, um, hang on. Uh, I'm suggesting rose quartz, should, uh, amethyst again. So amethyst about that size, do the same thing, put it upstream uh, wherever you can in the case of the barn. Depends how you get on with your stable owners, whether they're um, open to this sort of thing or not. But that sort of thing should be fine because your horse should be absolutely fine. Your horse will be really hypersensitive to it. Horses are wonderful creatures and they are incredibly sensitive. So see how you get on. Uh, you can also ask the elementals to help your horse. The water elementals you could ask. You simply ask, you can tune in from home and ask the water elementals that are in, um, in that water uh, to actually work with the water energies so that it is no longer disharmonious to your horse. Okay, you can do that. Lovely. All right, so see how that goes. Um, Sean's been saying stuff but doesn't want to, so she's taken those out. Okay. Yeah, go with that. See how that goes. Okay. Now, another question from another Kate. Oh, we're ooh, ooh. still got a few more questions. Uh, we're going to be here till about uh, five o'clock. So we've got 20 minutes. So um, we've got time, I think, for these next few questions, I hope. Kate. Uh, I have understood water. I doused onyx for the outside. Um, um, so I think what Kate's saying is onyx. Uh, well, what Sean's saying is um, she's suggesting onyx for the stable. I think is what she's suggesting. Um, try, try both. Try either. Try go with what you feel, Kate. Um, the most. Yeah. Okay. Go with what you feel, Kate, as well as what Sean's suggesting. Thank you, Sean. Wonderful. Um, Kate. So, so this is a different, Kate. Um, life purpose. Okay, so I, I've been doing some work with Kate, this particular Kate, and um, this is a question that a lot of people ask. Let me just take a quick slip of tea, please. That is a very cold cup of tea, but there we go. Yeah, it needs to be buried buried underground near above the water line ideally um okay right okay so now this is this is not actually a big a big long thing she's asking about life purpose what's my life purpose how do i know what my life purpose is how does anybody know what their life purpose is a lot of us spend a lot of time saying, what should I be doing? I feel as though I should be doing something in particular, that I've been sent here to do something. I have agreed to do things before I arrived here. And what I would say is, don't get obsessed by that idea that there is one thing to do that you should be doing one thing and that you're not doing it because it's not about doing. From this perspective, it's about simply how you are, how you feel, how you feel. Do you do things that make you feel bad? Do you do a job that makes you feel bad? Do you encounter things in that job that make you feel bad? Bad being a very subjective term, but it's all subjective. It's how you individually feel. Our purpose as human beings is to express a state of being. That's what we call emotion. We were talking about this earlier. We experience life to feedback emotion. 
but our goal is to be the best that we can be. What that means is expressing our self and living our lives in the most joyful, loving way. So when asked, what is my life purpose? Your life purpose is to simply be. That applies to all of us, all of us. Now, you might say, well, how, how does that work? And how are you living that, Tim? Because you um, admit that you get stressed doing these things. You know, I get stressed before a live because it's the challenge of, well, what are they going to ask me? Do I, am I going to look a twit um, in, you know, all of this stuff? What will they think of me? <laughs> and... Um, but the point is, of course, is that actually I love doing this because um, people like Voikan turn up, the full Monty, and have a big smiley face and wave a hand, and that's lovely. Because there's a, a unity, a sharing, a camaraderie, a companionship uh, uh, amongst all of us in in understanding. Um, <laughs> um, and that's that's all, we do, that's all we need to do is just to be ourselves you know uh, um, I, I do these things I, I, I have over the years um, kind of I, I've okay well it's daft I don't know why should, okay, I'm going to say this and then we'll move on I've done this, these lives, because I enjoy doing them, but that doesn't stop me being fearful. So when I say our life purpose is to simply be, my joy at doing the lives and interacting with you guys overrides my level of fear of looking like a twit and getting things screwed up and doing it wrong and connections falling out and all the rest of it so when spirit asks us to be simply joyous and loving yeah we're human so you know other things are going to impinge on that but the life purpose is to simply be that best human being that you can be but also know that that is not a, 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 a mandate to beat yourself up with, you know, because if you want to think about it in terms of the multiverse and, and the multidimensional aspect of reality and, you know, pick on the, the really popular scientific premise that there are many, many worlds and a world is created every time we make a decision. It's just that you go off in that one and your awareness, but your awareness stays in this one. Right, and the, so these bubble universes keep erupting out of, out of, somewhere. That's a very popular scientific theory, the many worlds theory. Right, so you can always think, well, I'm trying my best, but instead of beating yourself up and saying I'm not achieving, I'm not achieving what I want to do. Well, actually, somewhere there is a you that is achieving absolutely what you want to do, and achieving your very best you that is at all possible in a human form. But it's just that your awareness is not in that you. But that's getting a little bit kind of mind uh, scrambling. So the thing is that with the answer, with the answer to the question of what is my life purpose, yeah, it, it's not a thing. It's not I, you should be doing a particular job. It's not what it is. Is try a particular job. Uh, but if that particular job doesn't make your heart sing, don't carry on doing it. We're all creative beings and the creative expression for some of us is really important. And that is often what makes the heart sing, especially for introverted type characters. It's not necessarily about getting out there and sharing 
yourself. It's about expressing yourself, and often that's done in drawing, sketching, poetry, writing, all of these very private things, which you may then choose to share with other people. But that's still what makes your heart sing, and that's the purpose of life. Okay. Love over fear. Dawn, hello. <laughs> oh, how lovely is that? Um, you just slide in there and drop that one in there. Thanks, Dawn. Um, yeah, bless you too. Right. So, Kate, that's for Kate. Sally, let's move on to Sally. Um, right. Sally says, wondering if you have any thoughts on or experience dousing in crop circles. Well, we touched on crop circles earlier on when I was talking about fractals and, you know, these wonderful uh, repeating patterns of reality that go to make up our existence. Crop circles. Some people just get hung up on, are crop circles real or not? And he, fundamentally, some of them are formed by very mysterious um, processes, some of which are not so mysterious. Some of them are formed by people, and they're all a bit dull. Um, but the, the lovely, lovely magical ones is really just um, about the, um, the healing power of nature combined with co human consciousness and possibly manipulated a little bit by some extraterrestrial intervention. Um, so crop circles are basically sacred sites. Think of them like that. Um, they will work for some people on a very, very, very deep level. You can, in other words, what I'm saying is you can walk into a crop circle. You don't even have to walk into them. You can look at a picture of a crop circle and that picture of that crop circle will have a healing effect on one individual far more than it will on another individual. It's purely vibrational resonances of where that's going but the crop circle designs will have a purpose whether that purpose has been put there by our intergalactic friends or through the Gaia consciousness of mother earth is variable changes it, um, it, it certainly they are they can be um, very interesting places to douse they can also, like sacred sites, like crops, uh, like um, uh, ancient stone circles, they can sometimes make you feel a bit sick, um, quite often because of the um, the vibration, the energy, the power of them being slightly off your own individual frequency at that time. But they are mandalas, they are healing vibrations, the, the real ones. Um, there is a, an extraterrestrial type connection with most of them they definitely are sacred sites um again it comes back around to the fact that images um can communicate information just as well as sound we tend to think that sound and speech is the way of communicating which of course is is not the default way of communicating the visual symbolism symbols sacred symbols and mixtures thereof um, are very powerful. That, hang on, let's do it. Let's try again. <laughs> try again. No, I can't do it. That design there is um, is a channel piece of artwork. Uh, I've got one there and I've got another one right in front of me, an identical image. Since I put those up in my office, boy, this is like 24 hour, well, it's 12, 12 hours, eight hours, whatever, however long I'm sitting here. This has become a healing experience sitting at my desk because of these symbols, because of who they were channeled by and what they represent. For me, they may not be for you, but they may have an impact. You can hardly see it really, it's quite vague, but they are quite stunning and crop circles work in exactly the same way. Let me just have a quick look here. Um, Simon, hello. Hey, good man. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, well, uh, and in fact, that that kind of uh, yeah, well, exactly that that sort of healing vibration uh, definitely um, uh, definitely is part of that. Don't ever don't ever be concerned if when you are uh, in a crop circle or a sacred site, um, if you do actually start to tremble, don't be concerned by that. Don't kind of um, I mean, unless you feel really sick, um, don't you know? Don't run out. Uh, allow that to kind of that trembling to to process through because it is just like the EFT tapping. It, it's doing it's 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 a healing process. Sally, what more do you want to know about crop circles? Um, I've doubted in crop circles, but I, I haven't been involved with crop circles for a long time. But, um, an old friend of mine, a guy called Jim Lyons, he used to be really into crop circles. He was a, he used to be a big um, a part of the BSD, uh, coming at all of this dowsing and spirituality from a scientific point of view perspective. Um, he he had a lovely story to tell of he was working on a particular project, um, and I can't remember. I think the I think the image of the of his project was kind of like represented by dumbbells um, and he thought on the way to work as he was driving into work it'd be really nice to have a crop circle in that particular field uh, that represented the work the project that I'm working on please and so he put the request in as simple as that as he drove past and I think it took two days and then to you know in the, the the two days were up and there was a crop circle appeared on that second day and it was like oh yeah okay so that works then so he literally in that sense he manifested it um you know in the same way as we manifest or when we ask for a sign from the universe then the universe will present a sign so crop circles are lovely lovely things um yeah okay yeah nick of course you're quite a quite a, a fan of crop circles so and you're down in that part of the world here in the uk um Sally, if there's anything more that you particularly want to know about crop circles, um, do ask. I've got about five minutes, but I've got a couple of other points to get through. So let me move on to those. Christina. Um, OK, so what is grid keeping or anchoring or space holding? I get nudges, she says, every so often to do this kind of work, but I know very little about it. Would love to hear your take on this. Um, and then she wrote again, space holding. Okay, so, well, I've never heard it called grid keeping, but I'm, I'm thinking that that's exactly the same as space holding, holding the space, anchoring, being present. Um, so I, I, will tell, I, I will give you my interpretation of what holding the space means. When you're working with spirit energy, with any energy, with any subtle energies, there is a point at which um, you feel a change and uh, uh, if you're working in a group then sometimes it is the role of one particular person in that group to simply hold the space which means basically concentrating and focusing on uh, embracing that space um, with your being and with the connection that you can achieve as a human being accessing the spiritual energy of the space and the moment what does that mean? Well, it means that you know when you're connected to the subtle energies, you know when you are working with spirit, you know when you have guides present, you know when beings are present, that things are happening, and it is your awareness that is informing the space of that process. So you are, in that sense, the doorway, the portal, the anchor, the thing that is holding the space, the external world becomes part of your internal world. You are the gateway. I think that sums it up. If Christina, if you want more on that, then what you want to follow is simply to acknowledge that you have the right to be and to be present in that space as much as anybody else does.
Thank you. Bronwyn, last question. I shall, oh, well, it's 12.30 for Bronwyn. Uh, she's down the other side of the world. Dixie's probably left us and gone baby boys because he's down that part of the world as well. Um, okay, so Bronwyn, Bronwyn's asking, do you have to have a person's permission to douse? If there is bad energy coming from a house in your street, is it possible to send healing without the owner's knowledge? Possibly there are drugs there, for example. I'm also reading Adrian's book, Heal Your Home, and find it very helpful and practical. Yes, I can recommend it, Adrian's book, uh, in the absence of any book written by me. Um, oh, whew, that's ego. Uh, he, he's fine. He knows me. He's probably there. Um, okay, bye, ta bye, Tammy. Take care. Uh, Bronwyn. Um, okay, permissions. It, it's really important, uh, permissions. When you're doing healing, uh, Permissions are really important. We take that as read. We do go into it quite a lot in the house healing course. But what I would say in a circumstance like this is ask upstairs, douse, ask, do I need permission from the people to assist this space? Asking, you're asking upstairs. So you're asking upstairs, is it required is permission required in this circumstance for this in this context this is where we start to talk about context we go in a little bit of detail about context because you want to help but you need to be careful about sticking your energetic ore into other people's lives and that's why we ask permissions but permissions are also a part of when you're working in healing as we said before a big part of the healing is comes from the individual that is having the work done to them. So in a sense, asking permission of them to do the healing work that the management does for them, they are becoming aware that healing work is being done. Now, permissions is important, but there are there are times and there are, are there have been circumstances where I have asked the management to do healing work on people that don't know that they're having that work done on them or for them. Um, and there is still a result, there is still a change that is achieved. Part of even asking the question of, do I need permission, is respectful of the need for permission. So really permission should always be up there as the first stop. If it's impossible like this, but you wanna do something for the benefit of the area, then you ask upstairs for permission. Do you have permission to do this? Do you need to be asking specific permission? If you think about it, Fountain International, which was uh, formed by Colin Bloy in the 70s or 80s, uh, of which Hamish Miller was a part, and used to they used to practice healing, uh, focusing love on the hara of uh, towns. They didn't have permission from everybody in that town to do the healing but they certainly have permission from upstairs and they achieve great results. So, um, dear boy, what is the purpose of great energy lines like the dragon lines? Well, dragon lines, they're, they're, they're a type of line, um, as that's probably what you're saying, uh, Boykin. And can they heal people? Yes, I mean, fundamentally, the, the lines are, earth energy lines per se, Let's just quickly cover this off one minute. Earth energy lines per se are part of the overall structure and fabric of our reality. That is what I would say 100% is the case. How they are part of that reality, how they are part of the integral structure of reality is a little bit like, if we can, if you get a chance to watch the beginning of the, the live, where Mark was talking about the collapsing vortices, then I think you would like that. And I think you would like Dan Winter. Do go and look at Dan Winter's channel because you're an IT professional and you would understand what he's talking about. And he is talking about the structure of reality, but he's looking at it from the an objective viewpoint. So dragon lines as part of the overall earth energy structure are there and are part of the form of our constantly changing experience of reality but they are 
part of the the connecting fabric through which spirit information travels spirit travels part of the quantum foam of existence so can they heal well yeah but more often than not they you know by by harnessing earth energy we can use earth energy to manipulate our experience of reality and therefore it could be manipulated either for good or for bad so in other words it can be used for healing or it can be used for destructive purposes so it's part of the spiritual underlying fabric of creation earth energy per se is also wonderfully linked into our creative ability which is why it's so important in terms of how we create our realities but also our creative genius if you like from within a creative person such as yourself will really flourish if they connect to even a small earth energy line and acknowledge that that is being um that they are using that as a connection through to their creative inspired self yeah cool <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um you would have yeah you're talking to yeah okay cool <laughs> okay we've been going for a while um a bit over an hour and a half so let's wrap it up oh oh no that good who or what are the great keepers of them if any when it comes to skinwalker ranch and many other places they seem like a free-for-all yeah possibly so i mean uh, i don't know much about skinwalker ranch but portals and doorways um it just it you every single person is a portal and a doorway because you are as a human being you have a foot in the physical world and you have a foot in the non-physical world you have a foot in the macro world you have a foot in the inner universe you are a bridge you are a portal you are a doorway you are a highway of information emotion love hate any of these possible emotions you allow it to flow and you experience it you move it from one state to another you're transformers that's what we are somewhere like uh skin what's it called skinwalker ranch i know of it i don't know a lot about it um allows um okay come back to yours one-eyed oracle we did answer that earlier on it was uh, i suggested it was willow but somebody else then said that uh, the best wood was hazel for dowsing rods i don't think that there actually was a particular beneficial aspect to the wood for the, for the twig or the rods but traditionally it was hazel Yeah, very well, mate. Thank you very much. And likewise, do you do some super work? Uh, everybody should all pop over and see uh, David's uh, painting channel. Does some lovely stuff over there. Okay, I'm going to have to go. So One-Eyed Oracle, hopefully you got that message. Hazel was traditionally the wood that was used, but don't... Yeah, I mean, hazel's a lovely wood. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, very good. And we'll be back next uh, month. Um, and I'll pop a notification on the community tab. And we'll do it all again. Thank you very much for your questions. Thank you very much for being there. Um, thank you very much for allowing me to talk in this <laughs> meandering way. And I hope that you found that actually we have answered a little bit of information. We have provided a little bit of information about doorways and portals because that's what we all are. Okay. Cool, there you go, Hazel. The mention of the Hazel. Love to everyone, yep. Cheers then, take care. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, hot, nice hot cup of tea, I think, yeah. Take care then, see you soon. Big red button, bye-bye. <laughs>